So today's topic is about Brazil. Um, I, I'm from a, I'm from Vietnam, and um, to be honest, personally, I'm really curious about Brazil, and I'm very happy to be here today to talk about this faraway land that I have never been to. And now today's today's our speaker will be Igor Mura from Brazil. And so, firstly, about the about us about TCB. Um, we are based in Sydney. We're from Sydney, but we have friends from different countries, like from Vietnam, Japan, from China, and all other countries. And you can think of. But today, among other countries, we're we're gonna talk about Brazil only. Yeah. And to begin, let's take, let's have a small guess of these ice cream qu quizzes. So, if you're looking at the screen. Please answer, what is the capital city of Brazil? A, Rio, B, Brasilia, and C, Sao Paulo. I think not many people actually know the correct answer for this quiz. Okay, so the correct answer is not Rio, not Sao Paulo, but it's actually Brasilia. Yeah, we got a correct answer from one of our participants. Thank you very much. Okay, next quiz. What is the official language in Brazil? Uh, is it Portuguese, is it Brazilian, or is it English? What would it be? This one is a, a really interesting question. Many people might thought it can be Brazilian because they're Brazil, right? Or maybe is it English? Actually, the correct answer is Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. Yep, A is the correct answer. Okay, and the third quiz. Since Brazil is famous for a lot of things, um, I think many people know about the famous forest in Brazil, the most famous forest of all time. Is it Amazon? Is it Dentrio Monte Verde? Just take a guess, just take a guess. Okay, I think everybody knows this one. Mm, it's A, it's Amazon. Yes, it's a pretty easy answer. But yeah, that's what just the three most basic things about Brazil. And we are going to talk a lot more about this country. So let's welcome our speaker of today, Igor Mura. Hi, right. Igor. Hello. Hello, everybody. What's going on? So thank yeah. you, everybody um, who is here. Uh, I cannot see uh, all of you because I need to take a look at these slides. But I'm going to present myself. First of all, I'm going to present myself in Portuguese so that you get a sense of how the language is. And then I will present myself in English afterwards so that everybody can understand what I'm saying. Uh, only Luisa will understand now because she's from Brazil. The rest of you probably you will not understand very much about what I'm, what I'm talking about, but let's do it. Um, so, bom dia, pessoal. Meu nome é Igor. Um, eu sou um professor de inglês no Brasil, aqui na cidade de São Paulo. Um, e um pouco sobre mim, um, eu tenho duas certificações de inglês chamadas Celta e Delta. Um, eu, eu falo português, inglês, um pouco de espanhol que eu estudei na escola e agora eu comecei a estudar italiano. Os meus hobbies são uh, andar de bicicleta e correr. Um, além de dar aula de inglês, eu sou um professor de literatura. E eu coloquei ali cristão, porque um, a religião no Brasil ela é muito forte. E geralmente em, em outros países você tem uma religião maior. Um, o que no Brasil não acontece muito, porque tem muita variedade. So that's, that was wow, it. amazing. <laughs> Now, it sounds I... like I'm looking at a Brazilian movie or something. <laughs> Now, if I if I switch to English, um, I just said that I am a, an English teacher and I have two certifications uh, that uh, helped me to teach better, called Celta and Delta. They are from Cambridge um, University. Uh, my languages: I speak Portuguese, English, a little bit of Spanish that I studied in school. And I started studying Italian recently. 
Um, as for my hobbies, I love running and I love cycling. I would say that right now, this is one of my favorite hobbies because they are the ones that I, I can do. Um, well, I am, besides being an English teacher, I'm also a, a literature teacher and I am a Christian. And the reason that I put Christian there, it's because in Brazil, we have a lot of different religions, which is something that we are going to talk about a little bit later into the topic, uh, into the talk. So that's basically it. Uh, so now let's let's get started. Uh, Dad, for, uh, for this part, I was going to show the map. Do you think I can share my screen? Yes, I think you can. Okay, so, well, guys, I'm going to share my screen with you to talk a little bit about where Brazil is and everything else. So um, as you can see, Brazil is here. We are located in South America. And well, Brazil, as you can see right from the get go, is the biggest country in South America. Um, and then I'm going to be zooming in to show exactly where I live. So well, um, here you have a, a bigger picture of Brazil for the ones that got the capital right. The capital is right here in the city of Brasilia. Um, but I don't live here. I live in Sao Paulo. Now, Sao Paulo is the biggest city in Brazil in, in economical terms. Like, I guess it is the richest city um, in, the, in the country. And I like to make this analogy that um, Sao Paulo is for Brazil what New York's for the US. Like, all the, the offices of big companies are there. A lot of big businesses are done in Sao Paulo. So usually when people think about Brazil, they either think of Sao Paulo or they think about Rio de Janeiro. Um, and they are neighboring states. They are close uh, to one another. But I live here in Sao Paulo. I don't live in the city of Sao Paulo. I live in a city that is near the city of São Paulo, which is the city here of São Bernardo do Campo. And São Bernardo do Campo is in a region that we call metropolitan area, which is like the biggest cities uh, near São Paulo. And well, I live here in this neighborhood, Baeta Neves. This is the name of my neighborhood. And this is my house. Uh, I'm going to put here the street view so that uh, all of you guys can see where I live. So this is my street and I live in this house here. We were changing the styles at the time. That's why you can, uh, they are not all here, but now everything's okay. So this is my house. Um, so let me just come back here to the, to the map. How can I do that? Ah, okay. So guys, this is where I live. Um, so just for you to know, the dimensions of Brazil is an extremely big country. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now so that if you can share it, yours again. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Igor. Gary's going to share it again. So yeah, we can Thank all you. see that Igor is living in a very beautiful country, really big country called Brazil with different parts like that. So yeah, I bet everyone is really curious about the details of the country. Like what do people do there? What do people speak there? What do Good. they eat like that? And so let's yes. learn a little bit more about the geography of Brazil then. Great, great. Um, sorry, I, I just saw now in the chat that you, for me to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry. So, if you have any questions, guys, you can just ask me. Um, well, here you just have a, a picture of Sao Paulo. It is an extremely beautiful city. Um, I don't know if it is the biggest city or uh, the, the, the most beautiful city in the country. I don't think it is. I think there are more beautiful cities, um, but it is extremely beautiful. Um, and then if you can go to the other slide, uh, that. Uh, this is just for you to know how big Brazil is. So as I said, Brazil is a country of 
continental proportions. And as you can see here, a lot of countries would fit into Brazil. So countries such as Italy, uh, Mongolia, um, Germany, etc. And as I am here in Sao Paulo, this is my state. You can see that um, the state of Sao Paulo is equivalent to the United Kingdom in size. So Brazil is an extremely big country. That's why one of the most important words that I want to bring is diversity. You will see that it is an extremely diverse country. Wow. Okay. Maybe Vietnam can be in a smaller spot somewhere in the map, maybe in the corner. Because Vietnam yeah. is really small comparing to Brazil. It just really <laughs> amazed me. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know how big Vietnam is. To be honest, it's pretty small. Like, like you see the small part next to Spain, the Switzerland there? Maybe half of it, maybe. Okay. Yeah, really small. <laughs> Right, okay, right. so uh, I have a question to you, Igor. Like, in sure. this big, big, big country of Brazil, how's the weather like in different parts? Yeah, um, the weather changes considerably because um, if, if, um, if we divide the country between like south and north, the southern parts of the country will be colder because we are, ne uh, um, we are getting further and further from the Ecuador line, which is one of the hottest parts uh, of the world. And the upper you go, like up in the north, the hotter it will get. So here in Sao Paulo, it is already pretty hot. Usually the, the average temperature will be like in normal days when it's not hot, when it's not cold, about 24, 25 degrees Celsius and um, the northern you go the the hotter it will get so if you are here in the north you get uh, temperatures of like 35 37 usually uh, and sometimes like even 40 degrees Celsius so just here in this slide you can get a, a glimpse of the types of weather and then as I said the southern you go, the colder it gets. So these three uh, states here in Brazil, they are colder. It's not necessarily that they are cold. They are colder than the rest. And up in the north, they are hotter than the rest. But Brazil in general is a hot country. And as I said before, Brazil is a big country. We are divided here in five um, different areas, five different regions. In Portuguese, the name of these regions are Região Sul, which would be like the su southern region, this blue part. Then we have here in this red, Região Sudeste, would be like the southeast. And then we have Região Centro-Oeste, which would be right in the center of the country, this yellow part. And then this orange part we call Nordeste, would be like the northeast of Brazil. And this green part would be Norte, the northern part of Brazil. And these two here, the orange part and the green part, they would be the hottest parts in Brazil. All right, good. I was just ask. Take a look at some picture that we prepare about the weather. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so guys, uh, this what is, is this one? This is real, and I guess like if if you've seen something about Brazil before, you've already seen this picture. It is the Cristo Redentor, Christ the Redeemer. It is one of the seven wonders of the modern world, and Rio is a hot city. Uh, it's a city with a lot of beaches. And it is usually like super hot, like 35, even like 37 degrees Celsius. Um, and just to contrast with this picture, I'm going to ask you to move these lights, please. 
this is in the south of Brazil. So um, usually it doesn't snow in Brazil, but sometimes when the winter is a little bit stronger than usually, uh, the states of uh, Rio Grande do Sul or uh, usually Rio Grande do Sul, you can have a little bit of snow, but it's not like winter in Canada that every day it's going to snow. It's something that happens like one, two days and then it stops. Um, but it's, it's interesting because if you take a look at these signs here, um, I'm going to read in Portuguese for you. Oh, if you can just go back for me, please. It is written, Cachoeira que congela, which would be like a freezing waterfall or a waterfall that freezes. So um, the climate in Brazil is extremely diverse. Sometimes it's going to be extremely hot and sometimes it can be cold, but of course not as cold as other countries. All right, good. Such Any diversity. more questions? Yeah. Yeah, good. Can I move on to talk about the languages then? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so cool. um, as you have said in Brazil, it is really diverse. Mm -hmm. So I think Brazilian people also speak different languages as their mother yeah. tongues. Can you uh, not share a, this? Not as mother tongues, but we study some languages here. But it's pretty interesting. As you said that Brazil is a diverse country and this is for the good and this is for the bad. For the good, uh, like we have a, uh, an extremely rich uh, culture. Um, we have a lot of different people and traditions, but there are also negative things such as inequality. So Brazil is an, ex uh, inequality in Brazil is a big problem. You will have, um, a very few part of the of the population being extremely rich, extremely wealthy, and the majority of of the rest of this population um, sometimes uh, are going to be like poor or even like extremely poor, which is extremely sad. And when we talk about languages, this inequality is extremely present because um if you have more money you will be able to study more languages so everybody speaks brazilian portuguese this is our mother tongue um and then i put here two different languages um english and spanish so in theory everybody learns english in school but then here i have to make a difference between private schools that the parents will pay for their kids to study and public schools. So usually the English education in public schools is very poor. If you study in a public school, you will not learn English. You will not be able to speak English. Um, and if you study in a private school, the English classes will be better. But even still, usually, a lot of English usually, education in public schools oh, is very poor. If you study in a... I'm listening to myself like it's echoing somewhere. I don't know. It stopped. I, I don't it's think stopped. it's from my side. Okay. 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 No, That's good. Um, so a lot of parents, they uh, besides putting their children in a, pub, in a private school, they will also pay for their kids to study in a language school for them to learn English. So then this creates uh, extremely inequality because, for example, the kids of uh, richer parents, they will have more opportunities to learn, whereas poor people, they will not have the same opportunities. Um, so even still, like a lot of people study English in Brazil, but speaking English is a different um, idea. There, is, um, there was a study done, and I guess that only 5% of the Brazilian population speaks English in a conversational level like we are doing right now. 
So 95% of the population still doesn't speak English. They may study English, but they don't speak English. I is... see. That's why you put the learns in that mark in, over there. Quote, unquote. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think there is quite the same situation in many countries, like in Vietnam. Everybody learns the language, but mm -hmm. we don't really talk, you know, use the language in our daily life. And this is really breaking my assumption about Brazil because I thought everybody in Brazil can speak English really well. But then no. <laughs> what you just said about the data, it is really shocking to me. Yes, yes. So everyone, guess... we're really, we're really lucky to have Igor here as a special case of a Brazilian person who can speak English really well. It's true. I guess Luisa, she's also an English teacher. So if Luisa, if you want to type in the chat your perception about this as well, about uh, how people learn English in Brazil, um, because it's quite different from what, what a lot of people think. Um, and again, guys, depending on the state that you are, it's going to be very different. Sao Paulo is the richest state in, in the country. Um, Rio is, all, is very famous as well. So more people will speak there. If you go, for example, to, to I don't know, Rio Grande do Norte, to Amapá, which are up uh, in the north, which is not so famous and not so, as rich as the other states, not a lot of people will speak there. And guys, I also put the Spanish flag there. I know that Doc speaks Spanish. Um, so in some schools, depending, you, uh, usually private institutions, they have Spanish lessons. For example, in the school that I studied, I had Spanish lessons. Uh, but in the school that I teach today, there are no Spanish classes. This will depend a lot on the institution, but it is something that we learn as well. So English and Spanish are like the languages um, we learn in Brazil. And if you move to the other slide, uh, depending on where you are, um, you all, th there are some, some places where people also study native languages. Because um, before Brazil uh, was colonized by Portugal, we had a lot of native people and then a lot of a lot of words they derive from from these native languages like guaraná, açaí, abacaxi. Um, they they derive from from native languages. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many um, minorities are there in in Brazil? Like how many tribes are there? I do not Is there know any precisely definite... that, oh. but usually, like it's it's very. If you look uh, like for maps, you can find, and it's it's extremely divided. But today we don't have a lot because a lot of the native people they were they were killed um, during colonization from Portuguese people. So today we have a more Indian uh, native tribes in the north of the country. Here where I live, uh, you, you don't have it. Like you have a minority that you mm. can study, visit, but it's, it's not like uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of them. I see. Okay, so how about your story about learning languages? Because it seems like not everyone in Brazil is interested in, you know, getting further in learning languages. Yes. Um, so as I said, as I said, I, I had a, a great opportunity to be able to study English. My parents they could uh, afford my studies, um, and then I always studied English since I was a kid. And then when I was seventeen, I wanted to study marketing uh, at college, and then I was finishing my English school, my English course. And I wanted to save some money, so my uh, I, I got a job in a school as a monitor to help the students. And then I just fell in love with teaching, and I gave up studying marketing to go and study to be a teacher. 
I see. All right, that's a great story. Okay, so after language, I think everyone is curious about uh, about what people eat in Brazil as well, because in such a diverse country, they must have a bunch of different cuisines. So yeah, yes, so you would yes. you mind telling us more about the cuisine in Brazil? Sure. Can I can I ask a question to see if people answer in the chat? Yeah. Good. So guys, uh, of course, Luisa is from Brazil, so it's not fair if I ask her. But the other people that are here, do you know like any names of Brazilian dishes? Have you ever heard of anything? Hmm, I'm, I'm not even sure. Okay. I know about uh, Brazilian meat. It, it's very popular. I know the okay. Brazilians love to eat meat. It's true. It's Sydney, true. there's a um, Brazilian restaurant called uh, Brazzers, I think, and, and they shave the meat off, off uh, a stick for you. And it's amazing. Good. I guess and the name of this dish, Gary, is called Espetinho. I guess. Huh. It sounds spicy to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I don't eat meat, guys. I'm a vegetarian, so. But it's not spicy. It depends. It depends. It can be. It can be, but not necessarily. Um, but yes, food in Brazil is extremely diverse because of the influences we had. So we have um, European influence in our cuisine, but we also have African influence um, and then Japanese influence and Italian influence. We have a lot of different types. I brought here four pictures of dishes that I consider to be extremely traditional. So um, if you guys have any questions about other types, you can ask me later. But if you can go to the next slide, I guess like this is one of the most famous dishes in Brazil. It's called feijoada. So the origins, origins of this dish, um, it, it, it has an African origin. And as you can see, the four main ingredients uh, are rice and black beans. And inside the black beans, they will put a lot of different types of meat, like meat and pork and wow. I don't know, um, some, some different stuff there <laughs> um, and kale. So they eat this like everything. And after they finish eating the feijoada, they, they eat an orange. I, I really don't know why I never understood this, but a lot of people do. Um, and mm, so extremely... like feijoada is like the whole set or it's just the pot with the rice? So it's, it's, the feijoada is just the, the, the black beans and, mm. and then this would be like the, the, the things that you eat with feijoada. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Luisa said right. that the orange, orange helps with digestion. Yeah. <laughs> It's a Great to know. Habit. Okay, what's the next dish on the table? Good. So, guys, I put coxinha here. And wow. so, coxinha is, a, is like a, 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 a dough. And inside this dough, they put chicken. And then they fry this and, and eat it. So, it's a, it's a very good dish. It's a very popular dish. Um... And, and it looks I, like a snack. Is it like when do you eat it? It is a snack. It is a snack. It's not something uh, that you eat for dinner. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit hungry. Uh, I'm gonna have a coxinha. <laughs> you usually buy this in bakeries or in, in restaurants or etc. And we have a lot of variations of this dish. This one is the original with chicken, but we have mm -hmm. coxinha with meat. We have coxinha, even vegetarian coxinha, which is, which is great. Uh, we have sweet coxinhas with like chocolate and, and et cetera, which is wow. extremely interesting. Yes. It's, not, it's okay. not so healthy because you fry it, right? But it's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is acarajé. 
and I Could just I brought this. Yes, yes. I just brought this as a curiosity because, as you can see, I I am Asian, so my family's uh, my mother's family is Japanese, but my father's family is from Bahia, and Bahia is a, a state in the northeastern part of Brazil, and this dish is a traditional Bahia's dish. My grandmother, she loves it. And actually, uh, I never ate it. Um, mm -hmm. But as you can see, you have a lot of spices, such as onions and tomatoes. Um, here it's, it's like a shrimp. Um, and they put in, in this, in this it, it looks like a bread, and they fry this, and then you eat it. A lot of people say it's great, but I, I've never had it. Awesome. Good. And then and I the brought this. One. Good. This is a sweet dish. I love it. It's called acai. So acai is a fruit, and they make a cream out of this fruit, such as ice cream, but it's a little bit more natural. And mm. then you... Are you, you talking about the, the purple thing? Yeah. The creamy purple thing? Yes, yes. Have you ever had it? No, I have never had it. It's great. It's great. I love it. A lot of people don't like acai. I don't know why, but it's great. It's great. And then you can be extremely creative with it. So here, as you can see, the person put strawberries and bananas and kiwis, but some people put like mango, uh, condensed milk, granola. It goes as far as your creativity goes. It's And it's delicious. I, I, I really, really like Acai, I would say it's one of It looks healthy. Dishes. I like healthy things. It looks healthy. It is. <laughs> Depends. Like if you put a lot of things like condensed milk and, and powdered <laughs> milk, it's not as healthy as it seems. But in general, it's healthy. It gives you a lot of energy. So a lot of people, they eat it uh, after they practice sports and etc. Okay. Okay. So now that's a lot of food. Um, delicious food. Now, let's say we finish our meals and we're ready to play. So what do people in Brazil do in their free times? Good. So I divided this into two parts, guys. Um, what I like to do and what is generally known that Brazilian people like to do. Um, if you guys want to put in the chat what you like to do as well, I would love to hear that because you are from different parts of the world. So it would be great. Um, so here, guys, what I like to do is being outdoors. So going to the beach, uh, going on hikes and etc. Of course, that it's been a while that I don't go to these places now because of the pandemic. But in a normal situation, I love being outdoors. So I have this picture here of a trip I took with my friends to the beach. It's a city called Ubatuba. In, it's near Sao Paulo. Okay. Um, and if you can go to the next slide. So it's, it's a photo of the same trip. We were in a boat. And if you go to the other one, that'd be good. I would like just to stop in this, in this picture for a second. Uh, this is a hike that I've been with my, with my friends. Um, and I just want to call your attention to diversity. As I said, Brazil is an extremely diverse country. And as you can see here, you will see like white people, black people, me as an Asian person. And there is a friend of mine here uh, behind this, this boy with an orange, I'm sorry, with a yellow shirt, which is also Asian. And this boy with this Brazil t-shirt, this yellow t-shirt, he's my cousin. And so in Brazil, this aspect of diversity is something that I like very much because you have people from different uh, um, places of the world, their families, right, were from a different places, uh, from different places of the world. So it is an extremely diverse country, which is something that it's very positive. Of course, we have problems as well, 
regarding like racism and etc. Uh, it happens, but all in all, Brazil is a diverse country, and I think like that this picture shows it a lot. And I don't know, like Australia, I guess it's like that as well, isn't it? <laughs> Or I don't know. I think Gary is turning on his mic. Yeah, yeah it's his, his... muted. Gary. Australia is um, massively culturally diverse. Um, oh. Sydney is the most diverse. Uh, also, Melbourne is also very diverse. Um, mm. I, th I think there are people from China, Korea, Japan, Germany, France, Vietnam, Indonesia. Um, you'll find so many different um, types of people in, in the high schools, in the universities. Um, we even have um, particular suburbs, which are Korean suburbs or, mm. or um, Vietnamese suburbs. And, and for example, if I'm craving some Vietnamese food, I will definitely go to a suburb called Cabramatta. And it has the most beautiful um, Vietnamese uh, pho, uh, which is the noodle, noodle soup um Fair. yeah yeah have have people here heard of fur before louisa i never we have a new participant a sheila choco in the chat in the chat yeah hello sheila hello please feel free to hello. oh thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Luisa said that she heard of, of pho before. Yeah, I, I've had pho before, not here in Brazil. I don't know where to find that here, but I used to live in the States and there it's, uh, they had a, a area where Vietnamese people lived. So I had pho before, very good. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, the best noodle in the world. <laughs> Maybe in <laughs> Liberdade, Luisa, I don't know. True, can be. Probably right. there. It's an Asian uh, neighborhood. Yes, I'm gonna show a picture of Liberdade later for you guys. Oh, cool. It's here in these slides. Good. So, so basically, guys, it's it's a, an extremely diverse country, and I brought now this picture because there is a stereotype uh, from people outside Brazil that every Brazilian loves soccer, and of course, it is the number one sport in Brazil. But not everybody likes soccer. Like, I don't like watching soccer. And I am very bad at playing soccer. I just play if I like with my friends because it's funny, but it's not something that I watch. It's not something that I am good at. But soccer is the number one sport in Brazil. And again, talking about diversity, I guess everybody knows Neymar. Hmm. Um, we do we do he's the most famous brazilian player right now uh, but here i brought a picture of the uh, female soccer team and it's something that it's it's i don't know it's really sad for me because brazil uh, soccer is the number one sport but people invest much more in male soccer than female soccer because it's more famous and then as you see, like Neymar, I guess, like he's a billionaire. I don't know. He has a lot of money and a lot of female uh, soccer players, they have to, to like, they, they play, but they need to have another job as well. So it's a, it's a, a crazy situation when you contrast male soccer and female soccer, unfortunately. And if you press a key there, guys, I'm going to show it to you here in the female soccer team. The most famous Brazilian uh, player. Uh, you just need to, I, I put an animation in this slide if you can click there for the animation to appear. Good. So this one here, uh, the number 10, she's Marta and she's the best female soccer player in the world. So just to contrast again, Neymar has never been elected the, the best soccer player. And Marta, she has been elected like the best soccer player for several times. And wow. when you contrast the, uh, how much they earn, Marta, she doesn't earn as much as Neymar does. So it is, um, there is inequality there as well, and, which is sad. But again, 
Brazil's number one sport is soccer, but not everybody likes soccer. I, I am one of <laughs> those people. I don't know. Do you guys like soccer? I know Gary loves soccer. Oh, I love soccer as well. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Soccer is life. Okay. <laughs> but do you guys support a team or something like that? Um, I used to support soccer. <laughs> that, that supports the idea of soccer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And the idealist. Yeah. Um, and you, Gary? I, I support Tottenham actually um, in England. Oh. They play in the English Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in Italy, I, I support Juventus. Okay. Yeah. What about what about the participants? <laughs> what sports do you guys play? Uh, Sheila, Ha. I don't like soccer either, sport. even though I'm Brazilian, which is a, a sin, pretty much. <laughs> I well, support the team because my dad does, but I don't even watch it. I only watch soccer when it's like the World Cup or something. Then soccer, it's a little bit more exciting for me. But in the, the regular tournaments, it's not really my thing. <laughs> I like volleyball, though. It's a really big sport in Brazil also. Wow. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. No um, we have a question from Sheila, um, and we'll answer that one, Sheila, after the next part. Yeah, yeah okay, we'll have Q&A cool. time, don't worry. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Okay, uh, well, let's good. talk about cool. a bit uh, religions, because as we see, Brazil is really diverse in terms of weather, in terms of food, in terms of things to play, things to do, and of course, religions. Yes, please enlighten okay. us, Gore. <laughs> Uh, so, guys, um, Brazil is a diverse country in terms of religion, but I just wanted to make very, uh, like, quite clear to you that Catholicism and Protestantism, so like Christianism, the, uh, this, they are like the number one religions in Brazil. Christianism is the biggest religion in Brazil because of all the Portuguese tradition, like Portugal is an extremely Catholic country, but we have a lot of different uh, religions out there as well. Um, so, for example, I am from an Asian family, so a part of my family um, has Buddhism as a religion. And uh, there is a lot of uh, things related to Buddhism in our society. Like you have temples that you can go um, and you have... Liberdade, which is this Asian neighborhood that I'm going to show to you guys, uh, where you can find a lot of uh, a, a lot of influence from Buddhism. But, um, and if you move on, good. Uh, we also have a lot of African-based religions, um, and it's pretty much like this is an umbrella term. You have African religions, but inside African religions, you have specific names like they have candomblé they have uh, macumba is a religion which is the name of a, a, an instrument and there is a little bit of misconceptions and racism towards these religions that's why brazil made a law that um these th these types of religions they need to be studied in school so that people learn to respect them. Um, so I would say like that these are the three biggest ones and we have some others, but these would be the three biggest ones. Okay, here it's not really, uh, I'm sorry, I put religions here, but it's not religions. Uh, this is my final part guys and I just want to say again, Brazil is an extremely diverse country. So here I have a picture with me and some other teachers that I used to work with. And then you will see a lot of different ethnies here. And you can see some people that are Asian and some people that I have uh, like darker skin tones, um, white people, blonde people, it's, it's great. Um, that's what I love about Brazil. Luisa said that she has to leave. So Luisa, thank you very much for being here. Bye Luisa. Have a good one thank guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure um, as well. 
So okay. um, it's an extremely diverse country. If you if you go to the next slide, um, good. So here, guys, you have some traditional people here. Uh, this is the neighborhood I was talking about, Liberdade, which is like freedom or liberty, and it is an it is the biggest Asian neighborhood in Brazil. It is a touristic point. If you come to Sao Paulo, everybody knows it. You can find a lot of Asian food here. That's why maybe Vietnamese food is something that can be found here. That I, I don't know. I've never looked for it, but <laughs> maybe. Um, and here, guys, I just brought two photos for you guys to have a, a, an understanding here of skin tones that sometimes like I know that if you are uh, my, my parents they used to live in Japan and they tell me that this is something very difficult to see different skin tones so in Brazil you can range from these very white people white colored people to darker skin tones from black people and everything in between so um, wow. an extremely diverse country um, so guys, this is basically it. If you want to come to Brazil, it is a very warm and accepting country. Oh, the definition of success. I'm sorry. I forgot about uh, that. We'll talk about that later. Um, let's, later. Okay. Let's go back to the previous slide, Gary. Good, good. Um, it yeah. Is, uh, go on that. Go on. Yeah. So let's um, stop at this slide a little bit because I think what we are talking here is linked to the question of Sheila back then. Um, mm -hmm. So Sheila questions, oh, Sheila, do you want to turn on your mic and ask directly? Uh, uh, I'm living near the mosque, so they're currently praying. Oh, I see, okay, okay. All right, it's all right. Then I'll take the question for you. So the question was, are local people in Brazil accepting Asians? How, and how to work there? Okay. Hmm. Um, so in this diverse, how is it like to be at Asia? Good. Um, I, I would say it is easy, Sheila, depending on where you are. Again, if you go to big cities such as Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, eh, Minas Gerais, Belo Horizonte, they are like the biggest cities in the country. They are extremely diverse. So an immigrant, there wouldn't be a lot of problem there, okay? Mm. Um, but now in terms of accepting a job, it's not as easy as it seems like. You come here and you find a job. In the past, it was like that. We had a massive wave of Italian and Japanese immigration in the past. And people came here and found jobs. Today, no. Today would be more like you apply for a position in a company, you get a job, and then you come here uh, legally. Now, a lot of people, they try to immigrate illegally here. And then usually these types of illegal immigrants, they live in very hard situations. It's very difficult for them to find a good and a stable job. Um, I don't know, like, it's, I see. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Uh, but it's not as difficult as it seems, like, it's not like, for, for us Brazilians, it's extremely difficult to immigrate to the US. It's not as difficult as that, you know, it's easier. And also, Shell, I had a really great question here. Like, when we talk about a country, we usually think about the big things, the glamorous cities. Mm -hmm. But Sheila asked, is it a problem to when we would want to mingle with locals in small cities or smaller areas? Would it be difficult? It, is, it, is, it, is, it would be difficult because as I said, like only 5% of the population speaks English uh, in a conversational level. And then um, these people, they are more concentrated into the big cities, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Belo Horizonte, to the cities that I've mentioned before. So it would be easier for you to mingle in one of these big cities. Now it's not impossible because a lot of Brazil's smaller cities, they are the most important cities in the history of the country. They are touristic cities. So if you go, for example, to Ouro Preto, it's, uh, if I translate to English, it would be black gold. 
If you go to Ouro Preto in Minas Gerais, it's a small city, but it was a city that was extremely important in the past. So you will find uh, English signs there. You will find some people that speak English. Um, it's not impossible, but it would be more difficult. I would say Portuguese and Spanish, they are very uh, similar. And a lot of people speak Spanish. A lot of people like study Spanish in other countries. Not a lot of people speak Portuguese. If you have a notion of Spanish, you don't need to learn Portuguese. You can come to Brazil and you get by. Mm. Okay, so thanks, Igor, mm -hmm. for the traveling tips for Sheila and for all of us. All right, mm -hmm. I think that... I hope that helped you, Sheila, in your planning to go to Brazil someday. Okay, that's great. Okay, so let's move on to the last part of the talk of today. So when we talk about a culture, we don't just talk about the things that we can see easily, like the food, the clothes, the people, the languages, but we need to think deeply about what lies behind all of those. And what we found is how in different countries we have different definitions of success. That is what leads us to our behavior every day, to the system of the country. So yeah, um, for example, in Vietnam, we can define success as being able to give back to the society, being able to you know, earn enough money to take care of the family and your parents. That's how we define success. So how about you, Igor, and how about Brazilian people? Good. Um, so tradition is big in Brazil when it comes to families. So um, I guess in this sense that it would be very similar to Vietnam, like people, they want to have enough money to provide for their, their family. Or for example, when their parents get old, people want to be able to take care of them. So that's why that this picture, I think it represents a lot of what Brazilians consider as success. You need to start working and keep working and save a lot of money so that when you have a lot of money, you will have success. Um, so so um, a lot of, there is a positive, as I said, like this idea of taking care of your family, of being responsible um, providing for your loved ones. But the negative side of it is that a lot of people, they end up working or they end up doing something that they don't like just because it gives them money. Um, it's, it's something that is very common in Brazil. I, I guess in all the world, actually. I guess in all the world, you have these people that they do what they don't like because of the money, right? Mm. Again, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then like on the flip side of that young people like me like in their 20s uh, they are starting to explore alternatives so there is a lot of young people mainly today that this definition doesn't make sense so if you can go to the next slide those are people that they want to have a freer life they don't they don't want to have like a stable job in a company they don't want to have this like nine to five job and i guess technology helps with that so for example i have this friend of mine that he's an english teacher and he only teaches english online and today he lives in argentina and last year he was living in uruguay two countries in south america and wow, such a traveler. Of, yes. And all of his students are from Brazil. So because he only teaches online, he can do that. So a lot of people, they are, start, they, they are starting to explore these alternatives, try to work online to be able to be a digital nomad. This is getting big in Brazil right now. So I would say that these would be like the two most common definitions of success. I see. All right. So um, that is about the 
mindset of different people in different countries, especially in Brazil and how it's changing nowadays. So I hope what we can learn from this is whatever countries are you, you are in right now, it's important to get to know other countries' mindset and to see if we can change or improve for the better of ourselves. Okay, so lastly, let's, uh, this is like traveling tips from Igor. Like if you go to Brazil, what should you bring? Because I think up to now, many, everybody in the chat room can see how amazing Brazil is, how diverse it is. We all want to go there. So Igor, what would be your advice? Awesome. So guys, something you don't need to bring is a present for Brazilians. Like I know this, this is part of some cultures. Like when you visit a person, you bring them a present. This is not the case in Brazil. Brazil Brazilians, they are uh, extremely warm and receptive people. But I will give you a tip. If one day you get a chance to go to a Brazilian's uh, per, uh, house, uh, you don't need to bring a present or anything, but we love sharing food. So usually people bring dishes, like, ah, I'm going to cook something and bring to this house that I'm going today. And then the other person will cook something as well. Uh, so it's extremely common in parties and etc. Uh, to, to, to do that. Um, and if you come to Brazil one day, I really recommend you do so. My only suggestion is bring clothes for hot weather. Brazil is not, is not cold. Those pictures that I showed of uh, snow, it is extremely rare to happen and it's in only one part of Brazil. The rest of Brazil, it is hot. Um, so bring clothes for hot weather and you are going to be okay here. <laughs> All right, Igor, let's get ready. I'm going to get some new t-shirts and flip-flops. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Igor. I think that is all for yeah. today's talk show. I hope that everyone learned something from all the sharings of Igor. And thank you very much for joining. Thanks, Igor, for sharing with us your vast um, varieties of knowledge about Brazil. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Um, here uh, you can find my social media and I, I, I really like talking about Brazil because there is a lot of misconceptions about the country. It is not a perfect country, of course not. Um, I guess that if you live in Australia, in some countries of Asia, uh, it's, it's a much better place to live in terms of security and education. But Brazil is a, is a diverse country and you will never f feel i guess like lonely in brazil because people are <laughs> extremely welcoming um guys here you can find my social media if you want to follow me there to message me to ask me all the other things about my country please do so it will be a pleasure to help you all right thanks Icar. so everyone Thank take you your guys. screenshot follow his tiktok instagram youtube and send him emails. Okay, yeah. so uh, a little bit.